who's next? Yeah, who's next? Who a greyhound on my lawn? Welcome to the climb! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. As a matter of fact, that's literally what the climb means. It's an acronym that stands for creating leverage in the music business. Brilliant! Let me introduce you to my co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Anna Bellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And he also helps songwriters turn pro by teaching the art, the craft, and equally as important, the business of songwriting. And you can find Brent at songwritingpro.com. Again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. It's an innovative artist development company. Basically what he does is he helps you find your sound and he helps you find your audience. So not only does Daredevil develop and improve your artistry, they also grow and monetize your fan base. Monetize means what? It means money ties, baby. Daredevil has worked with <laughs> mixing it up today. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That's production singular, no S. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one, Johnny Dwinell. Hello. How are you, brother? Man, I'm any better. I'd have to hire people to help me enjoy it. I'm doing all right. <laughs> right on, man. It's good to hear from you. Um, hey, we got a lot of stuff to cover today, so let's just get right into it. Today, it, we are going It to- is a Johnny episode, which means we're cramming 60 pounds of stuff oh into God. a 50 pound bag, right? right? Like, I mean, goodness gracious. I, I stuff- listen, you're the songwriter. You are the king of the economy of words. You know how to blow my mind in six words, and it takes me, th- you know, three paragraphs. So <laughs> there's the difference. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Between I- your, your your quality <laughs> content and I just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> But um, hey, on this episode, I want you know I teased this on my last episode, which was two weeks ago, and um, really it, the title of this episode is "Don't Let Your Ignorance Get in the Way of Success." Um, and it's your ignorance about marketing or your 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 the story you're telling yourself about marketing or the fact that marketing is foreign to you or the fact that because it's foreign it's frustrating so you give up too quick and then you just don't do it and then we tell ourselves stories like well I think I'm just going to wait till the record's done and you know I have to get this out of the way first and then I'm going to think about marketing well this is going to be extremely detrimental to your career, I'm going to give you some some real world examples why you really need to get your act together now. You need to get your infrastructure. You need to get those instruments working so that you are prepared to take advantage of these little bonus sort of licks that come along. These little um, what do we want to call them? They're like they're they they're. they're the blessings, right? You get a little mm-hmm. blessing where you get to a last minute thing, you weren't expecting it, and and bada boom, bada bang, you're in the game. Now, the last episode, Brent, you talked about six words that changed your life, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And you weren't expecting that. Two writers mm-hmm. of unknown, you know, but you were there mm-hmm. and and hey man, you you were able to quickly make the relationships that you need to do to capture that and, and get paid, you know? Right. Yep. Um I laid the groundwork on exactly. being ready for success. Yes, exactly. And I think just again because it's you know for as long as we've been marketing music on the radio, that newfangled thing that hmm. started in the early 1900s, you know, and became pretty ubiquitous in the 1940s. Uh, it, it was about the music first, and so everybody waited. You didn't have anything to market until you marketed the music. But now it's about the artists. We've talked about that already. I don't want to dwell on that. But what I do want to talk about is why you need to really be getting it together now, the the value of a contact, and why you need to have that contact, and how you're missing out on getting contacts. I mean, if you're a touring Mm -hmm. band, goodness gracious, if you're, we both get friends, Brent, that play over 200 dates a year. Yes. And, And I sat down with one of those friends, a mutual friend of ours, and and well, actually, the, the, the guy that used to tour with him on guitar, we figured out. I said, "What's the average? This is this is club stuff, guys. This isn't arenas, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, like 
you get a big old club, you're playing in there, might be a thousand people in there, twelve hundred people as he's playing some big clubs, right? But that's Friday mm-hmm. and Saturday, right? But he's yeah. playing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if you take all those numbers and kind of average them, I'm like, what do you think? An average of four or five hundred people a night? He's like, Yeah, it's probably about right. You know? Four mm-hmm. or five hundred people a night times two hundred and twenty dates. Do the math. It's like if it's two hundred dates, it's at four hundred people that's eighty thousand people in a year. That's a lot of people. That saw you do your thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you like to know what their names were, what their email address was, how to get back in contact with them again? <laughs> I mean, how to... Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's... Just... I, I know it, it, makes, it makes my head explode and it hurts me for my friends that the opportunities that are right there, if, if they can switch thinking and know how to do these things. And I've talked just of our mutual friends about this stuff and it just hadn't quite clicked yet and it, it hurts me because for one thing I have songs on their records that could be selling more <laughs> you're like but you're killing just, me too <laughs> but just as a friend though it's like oh dude so much more business could be being done and you get your music in the hands of so many more people more effectively and and it's good music that's right I mean listen I think we've established yeah. that it's that you're not going to break on radio so the music isn't mm-hmm. going to be the first thing and in and, and the case of a live show is is especially in the case of this where these people are going to the club these aren't hard ticket sales these people aren't going to see these artists some of them are because yeah. they've, they've seen them a, a couple times but they're going mm-hmm. you know the, and so they have a following right but right. they've built that following up and how did they build that following up did they were they, they heard on the radio did those people go they wandered in one night to do what to go and drink and then it was the artist again artist first mm-hmm. they saw the artist and like wow I love this artist I love his they music melted her music. my face off Yep, and I'm coming back coming again, back. right? So, right. artists first there. Um, you know, if you don't believe that people like the artists, if you don't believe that you can get a career, uh, for instance, using YouTube, you know, hey, talk to Justin Bieber. Anybody heard of him? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's freaking wrecking Lamborghinis and tattoos. Like, he's a hot ghetto mess, but that dude's making money <laughs> hand over fist. And it's not about money, but he started on YouTube. They like Justin Bieber first. Mm-hmm. And then, then they bought the record. Plain and yeah. simple, folks. Plain and simple. There's no arguing that. So you don't have to aspire to be Justin Bieber or like him or aspire to be a uh, you know a Lamborghini driving fool. But you certainly bet you'd like to pay your mortgage and your your car notes and put your kids through college doing what you love to do, right? Mm-hmm. So um, it, we've got to do that first. And it, the way that that's going to happen, the most overlooked marketing tool right now for artists is contact capture you you can't afford to wait on that you have to have a squeeze page you have to have uh if you're playing live text capture um, okay, you're gonna have to tell me what those things mean i mean so i know but page. no listener left behind that's right that's right so squeeze, squeeze page, page it sounds like something i can't look at at work if you've downloaded brent's book or my book, you went right. through a squeeze page. We offered you something uh, of value in exchange for you had to tell us where to send it. We now have your email address. You gave us permission mm-hmm. to market to you. You can opt out whenever you want. Um, if you choose that, if you if you find your place, uh, it happens all the time. You know, uh, it, we get mm-hmm. churned. You know, uh, but if it's not valuable to you anymore, then uh, you can opt out. But until then, we're in contact with you and we're able to talk with you. That's a squeeze page. So we get the email address. You get something of value that hopefully you. you still think is valuable right and, right. and, and that you like uh, text the, capture mm-hmm. if you've ever done um, if you've ever been to where they have a keyword that you text a keyword to get so and so it's some radio stations even doing it right now I know Big 98 is uh, on several different occasions where you can get a thousand bucks uh, qualify to win a thousand bucks if you text this keyword or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you text a keyword to a certain number and then you get something registered, a download of music, whatever, a video and something you want, something you want, something that that you think would be useful and they get your telephone number and they can wait. They're not just saying, Hey bro, just text your name to this number. (laughs) Check out, check out what a check out our radio station, text your name and then we'll no. They, they're offering something of value. But anyway, sidebar. Exactly. And this is, listen, this is what we mean by ignorance. And I don't mean, I'm not saying when you're ignorant, there's a difference between being ignorant and stupid, right? I, I, right. You know, ignorant is, you know, I'm ignorant on uh, how to build a 
maintain a car engine. I know how to get the oil changed. I have a gas in it, but I don't, I'm not a guy that's going to do my own valve job on my truck. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Uh, that means I'm ignorant on that. I know that's, so I'm going somewhere else to get it. So, but, but, and that's smart. So this is what we're talking about. But if you don't know, you're ignorant of it and you need to learn because you're going to get little opportunities. You're going to get opportunities that are going to be possibly life changing. Like those six words, they could be as big as that. You know, I have w- one of those moments where, one of these opportunities could be as big as we're going to share a couple of really big stories here that, and one of them just recently happened that I'm about to get to, but, uh, my life changed. We were just my band when we were in high school. We were trying to get into the the big to this place called T. A. Burns in Milwaukee. It was the it's a parking lot now, but it, it it used to be the premier rock club in Milwaukee. We lived like forty miles south of Milwaukee, so we were still well within that radio market. And uh-huh. every cool band that was being advertised at T. A. Burns, you know, Saturday night we've got Mannequin, blah blah blah, and so that was that was where we wanted to go because that's what we heard about. That was the cool place to play and we had tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to get in there and finally the planets aligned and the the owner let us open up for this band and it just happened to be the biggest unsigned uh, one of one of two of the biggest unsigned acts in the twin cities which was really happening in the late 80s because prince purple rain came out Uh there between those two cities which by the way combined had a population that were less than milwaukee but way more blue collar uh, excuse me, way more white collar money, way bigger corporations, like a lot more mm. money flowing up there. They had seven different clubs that were paying AAA money. You could tour Minneapolis and the Twin Cities and, oh, make, wow. and, and make money and, 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 and make three, four thousand bucks a week uh, as a band back nice. then. Now, put that, you know, that's, that's a lot more than that now, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. But that led to the the, the contract with the booking agency that put us on the road for the first year where we were gone for a year. I mean, that one show, that one show moment. Because you were opening for the right people, the right people saw you, you had your, kind of your, your lottery ticket show. Exactly. And now, in this case, all the kind of technology that we're talking about wasn't around, and so it wasn't a marketing thing, but we were certainly prepared. We were doing something totally different, blah, blah, blah. But we were there. We were able to take advantage of that, and that took us to the next step. And this is what I'm talking about here. You can have a lot more control over that than I had, but you can really be, that. you have to understand the value of what those emails mean. And most of you don't because you're still ignorant on it, right? And again, I'm not talking down my nose at you. I don't want that to sound condescending, but don't focus first on how the heck am I going to get the darn contacts? And then once you start to get those darn contacts, then you're going to be like scratching your head going, asking the next right question. What the heck am I supposed to do with this contact after I get it? You know, one nightmare right. at a time, but first get it. Get the Don't contact. worry, we'll be here to walk you through all that's that. Right. Yeah, that's plenty <laughs> Stay of with us. We're on the journey together. <laughs> But, um, you know, if you, you if you don't understand the value of the contact, then you don't understand the need for it. And if you don't understand the need for it, any money that you might spend using some tools like, you know, Aweber or uh, lead pages for the squeeze page or call, call loop for the, the, uh, the text capture, these things might seem, even though they're relatively inexpensive in terms of, say, something you do see the need for, like a new guitar. Yeah. Right? Like, I am moving mountains to save up for this new Les Paul, man. You know? Yeah. This is going to be the deal. Because you understand the value of that guitar, and that makes sense, so you're more than willing to do that. If you don't, if you're not making, if you're not approaching your marketing and how to spend some money on your marketing to improve your brand like a brand new guitar, like a brand new piece of gear, then you don't understand the value of it. Because I promise you understand the value of marketing is going to get you three guitars. Right. There you go. Okay. So um, I'm going to tell you a little story um, about... And, and, and uh, you know what? Hey, let's bring the Bible into this. Because uh, one thing mm-hmm. I reference here is think about in the Bible, the, and Brent, you're much more versed on this than I am, but Noah's Ark... Okay. <laughs> I thought about this reference. I was like, I'm going to throw that out there. <laughs> but there were, explain that. Like, like, there were people that got it and understood the value of what was going mm-hmm. on, or maybe they just had faith. I mean, you please interpret well, that. And yes. then, what, what was, how'd that go down? Well, basically, the there was just so much evil in the world. God's like, I'm getting rid of all these fools. I'm getting rid of everybody. I'm going to wipe it out. But there's one 
you know, man that feared God. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. And so God said, you know what? I'm going to save you and your family. And I'm basically calling a mulligan on everything else. I'm wiping everything, all these people out. Done. We're going to start over. You fear me? Go build a boat. And so Noah started building a boat. And he built it for years and years. And with people calling him a fool and laughing at him, going, it had never rained before. Water, just the mist kind of rose up from the earth and stuff. And so it never really even had rained before. Like, you're building a boat on land. And we ain't near the ocean. <laughs> it, so it doesn't make and sense so to anybody, it right? It makes <laughs> zero sense to his contemporaries. They didn't understand the value of they what was not, going on there. Because you know what? It was not raining when Noah started building the ark. Say that one more time. It was not raining when Noah started building the ark. He started building the ark before it started raining. And so therefore, when God sent the rain, they just had to climb on board and let God shut the door. And they were good to go. So that's that's the analogy here is you want to start building your ark before you have a flood. In your case, a flood of good stuff. Right. It's not saving you from destruction. It's like a flood of opportunity. But if you don't have a boat, you ain't going to float. <laughs> if you're late, boat, start you building your ark when it starts raining. Uh, so, to, you know, just to to to, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story here. There's a, a friend of mine, a dear dear friend of mine, who, in fact, is the same guitar player that used to tour that other friend of ours that I was telling you about. You know, where we figured out how many people he's in front of every. Uh, yes. It, so he's he has a really good friend. This guy this guy named uh, this artist named Brian uh, Brian Rips, and this artist man, let me tell you something. This dude is the real deal. Like, I love this artist. Like, this guy is compelling. He starts to sing and play, and you're like, wait, what? Like, in a crowded mm-hmm. bar where everybody's talking and chatting and talking about their whole day, and they couldn't be bothered with the artist, and we've all been on those gigs mm-hmm. where we just aren't bringing it, and we just can't capture the audience. As soon as he mm-hmm. opens his mouth, everybody shuts up, and they listen mm-hmm. to this guy. So I want to build this guy up. And what I'm going to talk about, this is, this is, this is, this is kind of a, a failure story, okay? But it's not an indictment of Brian in any way, shape, or form, I think everybody does this. I'm guilty of it in the sense that um, um, fast forward to another what could have been a life changing moment when we did have the technology. It wasn't as good as it was now, but in the the mid 2000s, I was producing and working with a band called Candy Graham for Mongo. Turns out the singer grew up with the guitar player from Hootie and the Blowfish, mm-hmm. and so they start to do this like reunion gig or whatever. And uh, I think at that moment that. Darius was already a, had a country record out, maybe, and they were doing like a couple hooting the blue. They played House of Blues, and we got to open up for them. Nice. <laughs> I mean, packed freaking house. Everybody just is so high on life because they're going to see one of their favorite bands, and they couldn't be pleased. And all we had to go up was mm-hmm. we just had to go up and capture them. Dude, I, we were rock stars that night. You know, people were just yeah. all over, like, dude, oh my god, boom, boom. and I'm like, hey, wow, thanks a lot. <laughs> kind See of you around. to say so yeah man cool you know like that's it and, but nothing yeah. like I got no contacts I got so you know what? I'm guilty you, of this okay you romance the girl but you let her walk away and you didn't get her number boom failure right so oh. so Brian is he's he's in New York and he a lot of you if you read my blog there's been more than a couple that have been the muse was Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, uh, mm-hmm. who's this incredible marketer and just this personality that I absolutely love. And he has started this online YouTube channel called Ask Gary V. So it's all about people, they videotape themselves asking a question. He has special guests on. He answers the question and they go back and forth and they talk about how to you know get your act together. Stop complaining. Let's just work with what we've got. I mean, this guy came from nothing in Eastern Europe. Both his grandparents were in prison just for the fact that they were Jewish. Okay, that's the kind of world he came from. Now he's here. He's a multimillionaire. You know, nothing to everything. And and, and mm-hmm. he's that, you know, riches, rags to riches story. So this particular episode, Wycliffe John is his guest, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, what hasn't he produced that didn't sell less than 10 million copies? I mean, Lauren Hill. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, like yeah. so incredible. So uh, it, it turns out he his question, he gets his question on this show and he's. When he's filming, so your he's, friend, yeah, from my friend, from Brian Rips, asked the question to the Gary V Show, and they chose his video of all mm-hmm. how many they got, which is a bunch, right? Right. And I think that 
by the way, I think that that channel has like four or five hundred thousand followers, okay, or, or subscribers mm-hmm. on YouTube. He asked the question, and he he's while he's filming, he's just doodling and playing on the guitar. Mm-hmm. And and Wycliffe John is like, wait, hold a second, man. Before we get into the thing, dude, like you know what you're doing on that thing. He blows. <laughs> he 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 rattles Wycliffe John. And he's like, yeah. oh, I'm serious, man. I want to, dude, are you in New York? He's like, yeah. He's like, we need to get together and jam. And then Gary Vee just jumps on it. He's like, oh, yeah, dude, I would like, that. this is happening right here. This is big. This is cool. I'm going to set this thing up. And sure enough, he sets it up and they film it and it becomes part of the episode. So now this may not sound like a lot of numbers, but it, when you think about something as, as tight as like a Gary Vee show, it, th- those are very, very targeted you're not it's not like there's 60,000 people seen that video already but those are 60,000 people who want to see that video okay yeah. not that are just listening to the radio that are randomly right. blah 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 it didn't hit they're going there because they want to consume that they're paying attention mm-hmm. it's a much more high quality uh, recipient than say somebody just listening to the radio right right but no contact capture structure right no uh squeeze page no text capture no nothing and all he can really do is like hey just you know and people people are blowing him up on on the comments on the on that youtube specific Mm -hmm. youtube video and i'm sure on his i'm sure they found him on social media like wow dude you're amazing this is so cool like i really like so they're excited they're they're right there they're like they're excited and all he can say is i hope to see you out on tour uh, you know, so just opportunity. think about a look like it. Think about like, okay, think about this. So th- by the way, this is just your average, you know, this guy is out there playing every single weekend, busting his butt. This dude is not a rich musician. He is, does not have a record label. He's completely indie and, and full of talent. Like it just, mm. he needs, he's an important artist. I think he needs to be heard. And so he's just like you that's listening to this podcast. And, and but how about, that one gig where you get to open up for that band that you know is going to pack the house, right? How about um, when you get the opportunity to do a, f- a festival gig where you're going to be in front of 5,000 people? It's not hard ticket sales, but if you know what you're doing, you can sell it from the stage. You can get a lot of contacts, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you and I talked about, um, I mean, I had a, um, a multi-platinum artist that got on the Mike Huckabee show and mm-hmm. had... The- the TV show? The TV or the show. Radio? TV, the TV I think show. it was the TV show. I'm pretty sure it was mm-hmm. the TV show. And had the infrastructure set up, but wasn't thinking about it because, you know, they weren't brought up. They didn't become a star thinking about it like that. They came up with radio, right? Right. So they're thinking about the old way. And they just never mentioned it. And so, so guess they what? Had, they, they went on this, you know, nationally televised show with Mike Huckabee show. And they had all the back end set up to go, hey, go here to blah, 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 my name dot com and get a free new songs you've never heard from me before. Just put in your email address and tell me where to send them and Boom. they're free my gift to you. Could have had it all set up, went on the show, not thinking the way that Johnny thinks right. <laughs> and didn't say it. OK, so they missed that opportunity. So what was the result? Zero. Goose eggs. Nothing. Like no I bounce, no TV. sales bounce, no sales bounce, nothing at all. And I got emails for every sale that happened on that while I was with that artist at that time because I just do that. Like when I'm when mm-hmm. something's going like that, because I got to know, you know, and, <laughs> right? And and uh, and, it, and it gets me off. <laughs> 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 I mean, it really does. But uh, it, it was, it, I mean, so so nothing. So it, it, it's you know, you get lucky, you get these little lucky, and maybe that happened before, maybe this is going to happen before your record comes out. Maybe this is going to happen before you feel like you have it all together, but you're going to get a luck, you're going to get a little lucky thing. And Uh and if you can capture that, if you can capture those people who saw you do your thing and blow their mind, right? Like, I mean, didn't, didn't you have... I had a similar experience. Yeah, oh, it still hurts me to think about. It. So I was working with a buddy of mine, independent artist, that uh, got on the Mike Huckabee radio show. Mm-hmm. So this this person had put together a record, re, you know, really quality record, really fits Huckabee's audience. Mm-hmm. All right, so it was really good fit. He got on the radio the show for like a whole fifteen minute segment. Got, wow. You know, a call in, got to play a couple songs live, and. Uh, you know, so we're excited because he's totally independent artist, you know, but right. he had stuff like a iTunes or whatever. And uh, it was like, great, 15 minutes of fame right here we go. Let's see what this does for sales. And I was interested in that because I got a bunch of songs on that record. And 
no discernible bounce. It was very deflating. And this was several years ago before I knew Johnny, but, you know, we, I, we didn't know the deal yeah. <laughs> at that point. Yeah. I didn't know about all that stuff. We, we, we didn't build the ark. We didn't have it set up to take advantage of that where this buddy could go, yeah, go to blah, 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 and get da-da-da for free and just tell me where to send it, and I'll send it. And now we can – talk to those people and really capture more of them. Who knows what would have happened? We don't know because it didn't happen. And and my friend is a very frustrated ex-artist <laughs> at this point, basically. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, just going, oh, it just didn't work. And, you know, so many strategies I've learned now that we could have applied that yeah, it just it's heartbreaking. Would have made it's the good music. difference, right? Would have made the difference. I'm, I mean, uh, have you ever seen the movie Apollo 13? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's this one scene in there. This is, by the way, a controversial scene. Like people are like, "This never really happened" or whatever. But um, they they would give, I guess, astronauts cyanide. Mm-hmm. They would give them the pill, right? Mm-hmm. It's the suicide pill. Here you go. Um, and the guy hands him the pill, and he's like, "Look, guys, nobody likes to talk about this, but we want to give this to you. There's a thousand and one reasons that we can think of why you're going to need this." But mostly it's for the reasons that we can't think of. <laughs> so if you listen to this podcast, there are a thousand and one reasons why we tell you why you need to be better at your marketing and why you need to have contact capture and text capture and, and, and squeeze pages and all this. But mostly it's for the reasons we can't think of, right? When this right. random stuff happens. Like another case in point, this is a, this is a good story. So like a win story. Uh, oh, there's, a, there's, there's a band, um, a killer band. Uh, indie band called Seven Horse that I worked with in like 2013. And uh, these guys wrote this killer song called uh, Meth Lab Zoso Sticker. And <laughs> okay. what, uh, Martin Scorsese... I wrote that same title last week. <laughs> like, that is what so are the country. Uh, and and uh, I, just this um, total like indie rock band, like really, really interesting, these guys, and super sweet guys. And um, one day, Martin Scorsese, he's... he's, he's filming Wolf of Wall Street with Leonardo DiCaprio and he's looking for some music for it stumbles across their video on YouTube okay number one oh. wrote a song number two on YouTube okay uh, go with that first of all so yeah. he's out there he's findable they I, I don't know exactly how they stumbled across it but he fell in love with that song that became the theme song of the movie wow so now when they were they up for Golden Globes yes what song did they play? Meth Lab Zoso Sticker. Mm-hmm. Were they up for an Oscar? Yes. DiCar- DiCaprio, Scorsese? Y- yes. And what, what song did they play when they showed the, the clip? You know, Meth Lab Zoso Sticker. And so they get the opportunity to go on the Adam Carolla podcast. Adam Carolla wasn't on TV now at this point, but he at that point, I believe, had like the biggest podcast. Um, one of the... yeah. yeah. Like, a, like, it was, like, in the top three or so if it wasn't number one, you know? Yeah, it was big time. And by the way, 2013, podcast. really early in the, mm-hmm. the the scaling up of podcasts, right? Yeah. Uh, and so I'm like, and so I explained to these guys, are like, they want to play ball. They're like, yes, okay. I said, here's all you need to do. I've set it all up. Just, they're going to ask you to play a song? He's like, yes. I said, when you play this song, before you play it, thank everybody Hey, we're so happy to be here. And just for all your listeners, we got a gift for them. You're like, oh, really? Are you kidding me? What do you got? I mean, it was, hey, you know what? If you just go to, to this you know, address, this web address, uh, I think it was a gift from Seven Horse or something like that, hmm. and, and download the song, uh, or you get a free download of the song. You know, it's our gift for you. Just for, just for hanging out, we'll give you the free track, man. Thanks. And then I said, and then when you're done playing, tell them one more time. And they mm. said, that's it. Said, that's it. Boom. 800 emails in three and a half minutes. Nice. 800 emails in three and a half minutes. So, you know, when you are, when you're on social media and you're reaching out to people and you're creating that relationship, you're just kind of one-on-one. You're the guy next door that just moved in. Uh, Maybe I like him. Maybe I don't. Maybe I've got an open heart. Maybe I don't. I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. But when you get the opportunity to come across at a live show 
where you're mm-hmm. the most famous person in the room, whether it's a yeah. club of 50 people or an arena of 100,000. Mm-hmm. Or uh, if you, you know, if you do a festival, if you are able to get on, you know, a little lick like on that Gary Vee show, mm-hmm. or in this case on this podcast, or you get a, a TV, like maybe The Voice, right? Like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. like some, well, you and I, between the two of us, I think we know like five or six different people have been on The Voice. <laughs> All right. Like personally, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and here's how fresh like TV hasn't figured this out yet. Like they, the voice is leaving money on the table mm-hmm. because they're not doing this. You know, I sold a whole concept for a TV show to Discovery uh, Communications, which is the mass umbrella that 21 networks are under. This is not Discovery Channel. This is Discovery Communications. And on the, on the premise of this, I said, hey, uh, the, 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 the head of West Coast is a dear friend of mine. And I, I said, you know, you've got an encyclopedic mind to TV. Uh, we were season 14 at the time with American Idol. I said, I'll bet you can't name five of the winners. And he just, he thought, and he went, he went through everything. He's like, oh my God, you're right. And I'm like, mm-hmm. boom, if you can't, the consumers don't. And I said, but forget that. I said, that just got his attention, right? So I said, think about mm-hmm. this. There's 140 top 10 finalists. Right. That got an insane amount of TV exposure. Insane. They were still getting like 30 million people watching that show. I mean, that was like yeah. ridiculous. Like that was a huge like an anomaly, right? And I said, imagine if we were capturing contacts. And by the way, they were doing that because in the beginning of American Idol, you remember when they did the voting? They yeah, were making like- 50 cents a vote. They were splitting that with AT&T. So, nice. so they were getting 50 cents a vote. American Idol was getting a quarter of a vote. They were getting 60 million votes. They, folks, they were making $20 million a night just on text uh, revenue. And they, nobody got the Ooh. phone numbers. <laughs> to reach out to them like if we you know we voted for this uh, guy if you voted for 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 uh you know reuben stoddard then we should put you in touch with reuben right because <laughs> right <laughs> and take a piece of that right and so it, and so i just said 140 million people with that insane amount if we had captured the contact information and known how to uh, create a relationship with those people that we already know mm-hmm. like that artist and they saw them on TV so immediately the value of that is is much higher right oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's much I more I mean impressive. they have raised their hand and said talk to me right we are and, and, we, and we and you are I mean, famous you're on TV period right, right yeah so so I already love you and I and I said 140 artists you know provided that they all want to work and they're all alive and they're all healthy I, mm-hmm. I said I, I could guarantee you that each one of those artists could easily be pulling down five hundred thousand to well over a million dollars a year in total revenue, and you could be getting a piece of that. And uh, I said, now that doesn't sound like a whole lot of money for American Idol money, right? When you're talking mm-hmm. about a show that generated like four hundred million dollars a year, okay? Yeah. But that's mailbox money, and multiply yeah. it times one hundred and forty, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you could generate twenty, twenty, thirty, forty million dollars a year in mailbox money, taking a piece of the action for, for because of the platform that you gave these artists to excel. Which, by the way, you know Carrie Underwood was doing, and uh, you know they gave away, uh, uh, they, they paid. Though they didn't pay, I mean, they got famous because of American Idol, but yeah. there's an amount of time where they got a significant amount of their revenue was split with yeah. Simon Cowell and, 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 and the people that made that show happen because, hey, man, they, they made you famous, you know? Yeah. And, and, mm-hmm. and, and, then, and then, you, then, then that, that contract expires. So, so my point is, guys, like, like you, you need to get it together now because it, it, from this, from something as small as opening up for a really big band in your town where you could outmarket that band and pack the house later because you're really good um, mm-hmm. to something as big as a festival or something as big as, as The Voice and being able to find out who really likes you and stay in touch with them and bring that net out and put, bring those fish in the boat, right? Like, you got to do it now. Yeah, you got to prepare now. I mean, I, gosh, I had a friend that was on The Voice and didn't have any email capture anything set up and he did well and you know and then bloop, bloop. Yeah. Well, you know just can't find those people and I was, I was, go ahead i'm sorry yeah anyway my head's gonna explode so <laughs> i gotta get off this soon because it's detrimental to my health uh just watching all this untapped potential and people just missing what well, could there, be good well, stuff. well there it is now here's the other thing that the last thing i'll say before we close this out is this like um i was talking with another um 
artist just the just yesterday. I'm trying to remember who it was, but uh, they were talking about a friend of theirs who was on this show. That was actually uh, they contacted us about Bailey. Uh, it's called mm-hmm. Rap Game, right? Which is like this really massively popular freaking reality show okay Mm -hmm. it's about rap music though but Mm -hmm. and and the parents and the kids are all like talent on the show Mm -hmm. uh and so they contacted bailey about that because they're it's so popular they're they're spinning it off they're gonna do country game rock game pop game all that Mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna gonna spin it off like ncis or something and (laughs) so i hadn't even heard of the damn show you know i'm like what what is this about (laughs) and i got in trouble because i didn't know the parents were on camera too and the parents were like what bailey's parents like dude what why you tell us like we were gonna have to be on camera like i don't i've never seen the show like i'm just telling you what the producer told me like you know but but here's the deal this girl that was on the rap game went on there, uh, and sh- her Instagram following went from I don't know a thousand to like three hundred and eighty thousand, like in Ooh. two weeks. Wow! From being on that show, but guess what? Who owns that? Instagram. How are you gonna get to it? I mean, you can ask them. Please, give it <laughs> please private message me your email address. Yeah, you gotta pay. You're going to have to pay to reach them, you know? So, so right. again, this is another reason why your contacts are so valuable, because you get lucky for that show. Two weeks, all that. That could have been 380,000 emails. Oh, mm. my goodness. That's that's a business, is what that is. That is, that is a like, business. Oh, that is quit your job, go do what you love. <laughs> that's right, right there. It doesn't take much, man. So, Let's just pull this down. If you prepare for your lottery moment... And you prepare for it well, and you're prepared to follow up. That's actually taking the lottery ticket and going back to the counter and getting your money. That's right. <laughs> this, right then and like, there. I got a winning lottery ticket. Right then and there. Where to go? Man. I don't know. It's a pair of jeans. I think I put it the wood chipper. I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> my lottery ticket. It had the winning numbers on it. No, take your lottery ticket. Put gas in your car. Go get your money. That's right. That's right, man. So listen, this brings us to the end of another uh, killer episode of The Climb, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Once again, we're breaking records here with downloads. Please share if you like uh, the content that's on here. Share it. Let people know. uh, Share it on your social media. Email it to friends. Turn them on to this because so far, uh, most the majority of people listening to this really like it, and we want to reach more people. That's that's why wow. we do this. We're up. This is late. I got to drive twelve hours tomorrow, man. But I'm here past ten o'clock with my buddy Brent because we, we love doing this. This is and, and and it really matters when we're reaching you, right? Would you say that's true? Yes. Yeah. I don't want. I, I like you, but you know, we can find other <laughs> times to much. talk. You got a hot blonde that you'd rather be spending time with right go. now. I do like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, uh, if you also leave a rating and review on iTunes, on Stitcher, which will connect with iTunes, that helps us reach more people. We appreciate uh, all the listenership, guys. That brings us to the end of another episode. We want you to keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. 